Hi children, welcome back to social science class. Today we are going to start our geography chapter Lifelines of National Economy. Last geography chapter Lifelines of National Economy. In this chapter we will study about which are the mode of transport and we will study about communication. Let us start children. We use different materials and services in our daily life. Some of these th things are available from our surroundings. Some of these are available from our surroundings. Other things are met by bringing things from other places. So we use different materials and services in our daily life. Some things, some of these things are available from our immediate surrounding and other things are met by bringing the things from other place. Bringing things from other place. Goods and services do not move from supply location to demand location on their own. This movement require transport. This movement require transport. The development of a country depends upon production of goods and services. Production of goods and services as well as their movement over space. So you know children, the development of in every country that is depends upon production of goods and services as well as their movement over space. Therefore, efficient means of transport are prerequisite for fast development. Efficient means of transport are prerequisite, or, uh, prerequisite for fast development. For a long time, trade and transport were restricted to a limited space. Uh, trade and transport restricted to a limited space. But with the development of science and technology, it expanded far and wide. India is well linked with the rest of the world. Now you know India is well linked with the rest of the world. Transport and communication contributed our socio-economic progress also. So transport and communication is very important. It contributed our socio-economic progress. So efficient network of transport and communication are prerequisite for local, national and global trade of today global trade of today so what ma'am told so efficient network of transport and communications are the prerequisite for local national and global trade of today so you learned in the lower classes and all you learned means of transportation mainly classified into three land transport water transport and air transport land water and Air, mode of transport mainly divided into three, land, water and air. Land transport mainly divided into three, roadways, railways and pipeline. Roadways, railways and pipeline. So land transport mainly divided into roadways, railways and pipelines. Waterways mainly divided into inland waterways and overseas. Inland waterways and inland and overseas. Inland waterways and overseas. These are the two classification of waterways. Airways mainly classified into domestic airlines and airways and international airways. Domestic and domestic airways and international airways. So these are the mode of transport so mode of transport mainly classified into three or means of transport mainly classified into three land transport water transport and air transport uh, land transport class again classified into three roadways railways and a pipeline water transport again divided into two inland waterways and overseas Third one, air. Air transport classified into two, domestic airways and international airways. 
first we will study about the roadways india has largest road work road network in the world india has largest road network in the world in india roadways have preceded the railways roadways are more important than the railways so road transport is important comparing with the rail transport i already told you what are the reason for the growing importance of road transport comparing with the rail transport many reasons are there now we will study what are the main reason road transport is important comparing with the rail transport in india first one children construction cost of road construction cost of road is much lower than the, that of railway line first one construction cost of road that is much lower than the construction of railway line that is the first reason second one roads can traverse comparatively more dissected and undulating topography any type of topography road road can construct or road can traverse comparatively more dissected and undulating topography that you know any type of area we can make road if techn now technological development is advanced that you know so any type any undulating topography or dissected or undulating topography it is easy road can traverse comparatively more Uh, dissected and uh, undulating topography that is the second reason third one road can negotiate higher gradients of slopes and mountains such as himalaya that is the another reason road can negotiate higher gradients of slope and mountains like uh, himalaya road transport is economical in transportation of few persons relatively smaller amount of goods over short distances so that is another reason road transport is economical in transportation it is economical in transportation of few persons and relatively small amount of goods few persons and relatively small amount of goods over short distances and it also provide door to door services that is the next reason it also provide door to door services so the cost of loading and unloading much lower it also provide door to door services door to door services so the cost of loading and unloading much lower that is another reason next one it also used as a feeder to other mode of transport it also used road transport is also used as a feeder to other mode of transport for example we can tell if we want to go railway station airport seaport which uh, mode of trans uh, transport we will use through road okay so road transport is a uh, uh, feeder feeder to other mode of transport so these are the main reason uh, road transport uh, is growing importance of road transport than the rail transport in india now we are going to discuss about the classifications of road what are the important classifications of road on the basis of capacity of roads roads are mainly classified into six six classifications are there first one golden quadrilateral super highways golden quadrilateral super highways national highways state highways district roads other roads and border roads these are the main classification golden quadrilateral super highways first one golden quadrilateral super highways golden quadrilateral super highways golden quadrilateral super highways national highways national highways state highways national highways district roads other roads border roads 
these are the important types of roads based on the capacity on the based on capacity golden quadrilateral super highways national highways state highways district roads other roads and border roads first one golden quadrilateral super highways the government of india launched a major road development project the government of india launched a major road development project it will link delhi to kolkata kolkata to chennai chennai to mumbai and delhi through a six lane super highways by a six lane super highways that is called golden quadrilateral super highways so golden quadrilateral super highways connect delhi delhi to kolkata kolkata to chennai mumbai and delhi through a six lane super highways that is known as golden quadrilateral super highways so golden quadrilateral super highways connect uh, delhi to kolkata chennai mumbai and delhi okay so this is called golden quadrilateral super highways so you know children if you are checking the map of india okay just mummy mummy is drawing a outline map if you are draw, checking it will connect this golden quadrilateral super highways will connect delhi delhi to west banga uh, delhi to kolkata delhi to kolkata kolkata to chennai chennai to mumbai mumbai to delhi okay okay so this is called golden quadrilateral super highways delhi to kolkata kolkata to chennai chennai to mumbai mumbai to delhi this is known as golden quadrilateral super highways besides this uh, north north south corridor and east west corridor north south corridors linking north south corridor north south corridor east west corridor this is another super highways okay the north south corridors and east west corridor north south corridor connect srinagar in linking srinagar in jammu and kashmir to kanyakumari in tamil nadu srinagar in jammu and kashmir to kanyakumari in tamil nadu kanyakumari in tamil nadu north south corridor it will connect srinagar in jammu and kashmir to kanyakumari in tamil nadu okay then east west corridor here you know it is west east west corridor east west corridor east west corridor connect silchar in assam to porbandar in gujarat so silchar in assam to porbandar here porbandar in gujarat that is called east west corridor so these are the main super highways okay so ma'am told about the golden quadrilateral super highways which all are the places or which all are the mega cities it will connect that i told then ma'am told about the north south corridor and uh, east west corridor north south corridor will connect from north to south that ma'am told jammu and kashmir to kanyakumari in jammu and Ka in srinagar in jammu and kashmir to kanyakumari in tamil nadu east west corridor will connect east to west east silchar in assam to porbandar in gujarat so this is about important super highways and the main objective of these super highways it to reduce the distance between the mega cities of india reduce the distance between the mega cities of india and this project is implemented by nhai nhai national highway authority of india national highway authority of india so these roads and uh, super highways are maintained by nhai national highway authority of india 
other types of roads next class we will study i think today's topic is clear to you if you have any doubt ask me we will meet in the next class